Okay, welcome to the second part of lecture four, the Greeks and sign tables. It's entitled Calculating Trig Functions Before Calculators. So these intriguing pictures on the left-hand side are things that you probably have never seen before. But from 200 BC until the early to mid-1900s, nearly all calculations were done either with tables or with mechanical tools that act similar to tables like a slide rule. There also were some mechanical calculators that were around at that time. The Greeks constructed sign tables, but log logarithm tables only arrived in the 1600s. The accuracy that they was needed for these tables was seven digits, or one part in 10 million, for astronomical calculations. And that's a incredibly severe number of digits that is needed if you can imagine trying to do calculations of a square root or other things like that by hand with seven digit numbers and achieving seven digits of accuracy with your final answer in principle it can be done but it's going to be torturous tortuously tedious to get through all of those kinds of calculations now while it was difficult to generate these tables they were really a key to science and technological advances because without them it, be, it was virtually impossible to do the complicated calculations that were needed to actually determine things like what was the orbit of Jupiter including all the perturbations from the other planets or how do I determine the tides or how do I make sure my steam engine doesn't explode on me and so forth. So objects like the slide rule, which use these ideas in a mechanical way, they were very popular because they were very easy to use, but they weren't incredibly accurate. Probably two, three digits of accuracy is about all you could get out of them. And they became completely obsolete once the calculator really made its entrance because the calculator was able to give eight digits of accuracy with uh, no problems whatsoever. Now, constructing a sign table is difficult, but it was done over 2,000 years ago, so it is worthwhile to see just how the Greeks actually did it. And in the lower panel, that is a picture of what a sign table would actually look like. And so let's go through the details of exactly how we make one. The Greeks only knew two things about sines and cosines, but you can do a lot with these two things that they knew. They knew Archimedes' result, which allows them to find the half angle or sine of x over 2 if they knew what sine x was. The second thing that they knew were the sine sum and difference formulas and that would be sine of x plus or minus y is equal to sine x times cosine y plus or minus cosine x times sine y. Now I know all of you have seen this in your high school. You probably also saw it in your calculus classes. I don't expect you to be able to derive it. I believe we are going to derive it a little bit later in the class. What I do expect is for you to recognize it and say, yes, I know that. I may not have memorized it, but I know it. And if I see it, I know exactly how to use it. And that's really the important thing is making sure you're comfortable with using a formula like that. OK, so how do we start? They knew about a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, which gives them sine of 30. And you may remember sine of 30 is equal to a half. They got sine of 36 degrees from a regular hexagon which they also knew all the details about that shape. Then they applied Archimedes to each of those results to get sine of 15 degrees and sine of 18 degrees. Then they used the difference formula to give them sine of 3 degrees. Then they brought in Archimedes again twice to give sine of 1 and a half degrees and then sine of 3 quarters of a degree. And now they use the fact that sine x divided by x is monotonic. That means sine x over x turns out is actually a decreasing function of x. How do I see that? Well, the red line is x, and the green line is a sketch of what sine of x looks like. How do I know that? Well, I know sine x starts off with the same slope as x does for small x, but I also know that sine x is equal to 1 when x is equal to pi over 2, but at pi over 2, x is equal to pi over 2. So the linear curve lies above the sine curve at pi over 2. And indeed, that shape is precisely what sine x and x look like. So if I divide sine x by its larger number, which is x, I will find sine x divided by x is a monotonic function. And a 
monotonic function means that sine x over x will be less than sine y over y if x is less than y. Now I'm going to use that in a slightly rearranged form. I'm going to look at sine x over sine y is less than x over y for x less than y. And I'm going to pick x equals 1.5 and y equals 1. And I'm going to rearrange that formula to learn that 2 thirds of sine 1.5 is less than sine 1. And I'm similarly going to do the same thing with x equals 0 0.75 or 3 fourths and y equals 1. And there I'm going to learn that sine 1 is less than 4 thirds of sine 0 0.75. Please take the 10 seconds that it takes for you to verify that indeed those are the two correct formulas that you will get by noting that sine x over x is a monotonic function. Okay, so we have learned these two identities that brackets sine 1 in between two values, and I can actually evaluate those values because I already got them. And what you find is 0 0.01745130 is less than sine 1 is less than 0 0.01745279. This is going to give me sine 1 to 5 to 6 digits of accuracy. And then we bring in Archimedes and use it one more time to get sine of 0 0.5 degrees. And that is the starting point for the table. We then use the sum formula to get sine of 1 degrees sine of one and a half degrees, sine of two degrees, and so forth, all the way out to 45 degrees. That's as far as you need to go to get all of the values for sine because you can determine the other ones through trigonometric relations. And that's how the sine table was generated. Now, in general, you're going to need angles that are somewhat in between those found at half degree intervals. And those intermediate values are found by using a technique called interpolation and we're going to be discussing interpolation in the in-class problems when we get to those during class itself.